Completing a test order can help you feel confident that the checkout area of your Shopify store is set up correctly. So I'm, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, right now we are just on the home screen of a Shopify store that I no longer use, but we're going to go down into the bottom left corner into settings. Just click that. Once the settings have opened, we are going to click into payments. You'll see that is about the fifth one down. Okay, now that the payment section has opened, we are going to click manage. Once we are on this page, we're going to go all the way to the bottom. This test mode section is where we are going to enable the test mode. So all you need to do is check mark next to enable test mode. And you will see this notification pop up. When test mode is on, all Shopify payments transactions are simulated. You cannot actually run an actual payment through and collect payment while test mode is on. And make sure you hit save. Before we leave this page and actually go place a test order, you will want to open up this link. This blue text is a link, so click that, it will open another tab. In this new tab, scroll down until you see test mode. And the most important part here is, so we already activated, that's what this is saying. But the most important part that you'll need to do these simulated transactions is all these card numbers here. You have to enter in these numbers. And then it also says on here, for name on card, enter at least two words. For the expiry date, enter any date in the future. Security code, enter any three digits. And then card number, you have to use one of these. So down here, they'll tell you how you can simulate some failed transactions. So they will give some credit card numbers you can put in to give different error messages, or they will give an expiry month to put in, expiry year, or how to enter in a security code in order to get error messages. I will go through and show all of those as well, but first I'm gonna start off with putting through a successful test order. So I'm gonna go into my website. This is a website I no longer use. So I've added a random item to my bag. I'm gonna to go to checkout. Your store may look a little different. It depends on what theme you have on your Shopify store. I filled in a contact email and then I have filled in a fake delivery address. Now I'm going to scroll down to the shipping method and the payment method. In shipping method, I have selected the USPS first class mail, which actually that doesn't even exist anymore because they've changed it to ground advantage. But for this example, just ignore that. That would be USPS ground advantage now. And then that shows up over here as 317 and has estimated taxes. Just a reminder that this will not actually charge any card because we are in test mode. So right here, card number, is where I'm going to go back to the tab that has the Shopify Help Center that tells you those numbers to input. So we're just going to pick the first one. I'm going to select all that, and we're going to run this visa. And just a reminder, for the expiration date, it says up here, we can enter any date in the future. We're going to put December of 2029. Security code, it said you can put any three digit number. We're just gonna go one, two, three. Name on card, I had my name, but it could be anything, but you can, you know, you could put Jane Doe in there if you want to. And then use shipping address as billing address. That's fine for this example. So now I'm gonna hit pay now. And the fake order has gone through. So it's showing a fake confirmation number. It has all the details down below. So this is what your customer would see when they have a successful order actually go through. Again, this did not charge anyone because we are in test mode and we are entering in those fake credit card numbers given by Shopify to use. If you use any of these test credit card numbers, it will look very similar because it will all bring you to that same confirmation page. But now we're going to run through these six ways to have a failed transaction. So we're going to start off by putting in this credit card number and it will say a card declined message. But I have to go back. I'm just going to add something random to my card again. I'll just add that same pattern. We are now back in the cart. I have added a different fake address. And again, I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom to the shipping method and the payment method. And to get the card decline message, remember I'm gonna enter in this number given by Shopify. So I already copied that. We're gonna paste that in here. We're gonna put December of 2029 as the expiration date. Security code, we're just gonna put 111. Name on card, just gonna leave it as mine. Hit pay now. And this error pops up. Your card was declined. Try again or use a different payment method. So that is what your customer would, would see 
if their card was declined. Now we are going to create a different failed transaction. For this one, it says generate an incorrect number message. So if someone entered in a credit card number that didn't even exist in any system, and it already pops up, entered a valid card number. It's not reading it as a card number that can be used. I can fill out the rest here. Hit pay now, see it's just not gonna work. Enter a valid card number. That is telling your customer that they've entered something in wrong from their credit card because the number they entered does not even exist. For the next failed transaction, we're gonna do the disputed transaction. So we're gonna copy that one, enter it in here. I'm gonna leave the rest all the same. Hit pay now. So this one does open up with the confirmation page, but we need to go in our orders. These test orders will show up in our orders. To see the test orders that went through from the home page, we're going to click orders. And here we can see the two test orders. I'm going to open up both of them. This one is the first test order we did. So this is the one that didn't have any issues and see everything looks very normal. There's no error messages popping up. It's just saying this was done in test mode. So even know not to try to ship it or something. And if we scroll down here, everything is very normal. This one in red, unable to authorize the transaction using a visa ending in, and then I've covered it up. I just wanted to test what would see what would happen if I entered in a real credit card number. It did, it did not allow the test order to go through. I came up with an alert saying you can't use a real credit card when you're in test mode. So everything else is saying it was authorized using the visa with that ends in that number that Shopify gave us to run the test order. And an order confirmation was sent to, it's saying it was sent to me. And it will actually send an email to the email address that you entered with this test order. So I do have an email from this in my inbox saying your order was confirmed. Again, it is a fake order. You know, no, no money was exchanged anywhere. And then it was saying how the payment was captured. And then it was saying that this amount, if it was a real payment, would be added to my payout. Now let's go into the order that has the charge back which I, I have open in this other tab. In this test order, the one with the chargeback, you'll see this notification popping up saying the customer opened a chargeback totaling $21.97. And then if you'll notice, this $21.97 is different than the amount of our test order. The reason this is, is because there's a $15 fee for the chargeback. Depending on what your country you're in, the fee may be a different amount. In the United States, it is a $15 fee. If the chargeback is resolved in your favor, then most countries you will get that fee back. Some do not. For example, France does not, but most other ones do. In the United States, you would get that, that $15 fee back if, if they go in your favor versus the customer. And you'll see below you have until, and then they'll give you a date to submit evidence and dispute the chargeback. If you choose not to respond, we'll send evidence to the customer's bank on your behalf on that date. While running my store, I never actually had anyone send a chargeback with the actual credit card through Shopify. A lot of times it went through PayPal. The most common scenario where someone would do a chargeback on me is if they're thinking I didn't ship it or if it was lost in transit. And this oftentimes happened when I was shipping something international. So let's say it was taking three weeks to show up and the person thought it should be there in a week and a half. Sometimes they would submit a charge back and I wasn't good enough with my evidence that I lost in those cases. So the customer ended up getting their money back. And then I think in all those cases, the item did eventually show up. A lot of times what I would do is if I kept having way too long of shipping times to a certain country, I would just remove that from the countries I shipped to because I didn't want to deal with all these chargebacks. It's expensive to ship overseas and so having to pay that out of my own pocket just didn't make a lot of sense. I wasn't making a very large profit on my items dollar wise so it didn't make sense to take that risk in case someone did do a chargeback on me because of the long shipping time. On this page I'm going to scroll down to the bottom we're just going to see if it looks any different on this one. On the bottom of this order you will see this unable to authorize visa ending in 0002. So that was the first failed simulated transaction we did and then we entered in the next one to create this chargeback order. And it was saying it was authorized, confirmation email was sent. Again, with this one, I do have an email in my actual inbox of the email I put on the checkout page. And then it's just saying it was captured. 640 would have been in our payout. And then because there was this chargeback, 2197 will be deducted for the next payout. And then you would have to dispute it.
Since we've looked at these two orders, I'm going to go back and test out the other failed transactions. So we've done these first three. So we're going to do invalid expiry month. So we're going to put 13 in for the month. I'll just pick one of these from up top. They would normally work, but won't work in this case because we're going to make it not work with the invalid expiry month. And then I will need to make a new cart since this one did go through as confirmed. Again, I'm just going to add a random pattern to my cart. I've entered an email. I've entered a delivery address. Again, this is just a fake one. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom again. For the card number, I've entered in this Diners Club card. And then we're going to put the month 13 as the expired month so we can get the error code. And it'll say entered, enter a valid expiration date. So that's a code your customer would see. If you hit pay now, it just keeps that error message popped up. Next, we're gonna do use an expiry year in the past to generate an invalid expiry year message. So in the past, we'll put 18. And again, enter a valid expiration date. So get the same sort of message. And then for the invalid security code message, we're gonna put in a two digit security code. So I'm just gonna change it to 12. And we see enter the CVV or security code on your card. It knows it is not a valid one, so it's just popping up with the error message. Even if we correct the error messages on this side, this error message will stay popped up because we did, we did not enter a correct CVV code, which is the card verification value. At this point, we've gone through all the scenarios that Shopify gave us to test. Don't be afraid to put your, your Shopify store in test mode and just kind of play around with things and get comfortable with them and kind of know how an order will come through. And just make sure when you're done and you want to be able to accept actual payments that you turn off test mode. And a quick reminder on how to turn off test mode, you're gonna go into settings, then you're gonna go into payments. You could click here to turn it off or you can hit manage. We're gonna scroll down to the bottom. We're gonna deselect enable test mode and then we're gonna hit save. And as simple as that, now your, your store would be open for actual payments.